All right, Golf Pit fam, welcome back. We are on the road today at Enagic Golf Course for a PGA Tour pre-qualifier. We are about to go follow around one of my professional students, Nick Berry, wonderful player and young man. And Nick just recently hasn't been getting as much out of his rounds as he wants to. So we're gonna go take a peek. We're gonna see what's going on. We're gonna see where we can save some strokes for him on the course without even touching his golf swing. And at the same time, guess what? We're gonna come back at the end of the day, we're gonna share those with you, and they're gonna be able to help you save strokes too. Cool, you guys are gonna to get to see this through the coach's eyes, right? And there are certain things when you're playing golf that have to happen. There are certain things that can't happen. And we're gonna get a good look at those and see if we can keep those in play today. Good swing, quick tee pickup. On Monday, if you were trying to qualify for this event, you might have to hit driver here. Today, you don't have to. You can play smart. He hit a three iron right down here where he can see it, right at this tree, put it in the fairway, and now he looks like he's gonna have just a short iron in, right? So again, making good decisions is part of um, how you're gonna score well, right? It's amazing that you guys will understand how just the decisions you make, just the clubs you take, just the lines you pick, and the things you're aware of out there will lower your scores for you. Alright guys, so we had a pretty, we were in a position there where we could really attack the pin. You know, there's a place right there where we needed to be a little bit more aggressive. We got a short iron in our hand, a wedge. We got a pin more in the middle of the green. We got to give ourselves inside 15 or 20 feet from that position there, okay? So now he's got a 30 or 40 footer, you know, that percentage wise he's not going to make. He could, but we would have loved to have given us ourselves, you know, maybe inside a uh, like I said, inside 20 feet, inside 15 feet. There he is, about 35 feet up the hill. Not the best shot, so we know we can save some strokes by getting the direction and distance control of those wedges dialed in a little bit. We need to have a better look after a 130 yard shot than that. Par four to now a 480 yard par four. Looks like the fairway's a little more generous. Obviously the length of the club, we gotta get driver out, we gotta pound it. So depending on what we're doing, as we look down here, Kev will give you a great look at the fairway. I mean, most good players are gonna pound a, a ball towards the left bunker and let it work back into the fairway. You gotta be aware of the spin. Um, and the wind in this situation. If the wind was left to right, it could get a little away from us. Good ball comes out the left edge of the fairway, the only one perfect shot right down the middle. We already have so much information to help Nick clean up his score. You know, again, we said what was happening. He's hit great shots. He hit everyone solid. He hit two fairways, one green, right? But we were loose with a scoring club and we weren't as sharp as we needed to be with a long distance putt and our lag putting, okay? And when you think about scoring, this is scoring. It's not getting up there and hitting your seven iron, you know? It's, it's short game around the green, it's shots inside 150 yards, and it's lag putting and putting, okay? The one thing I love that I've seen is he's made two six or eight footers already. So those mid-range putts that hopefully are birdies or par savers, you're making really good. We want to have as few of those for par savers as possible. Lucky ball might be in the rough, kind of changes things. A pretty clean line, it's right on the um, fringe of the long grass and the fairways. I'd probably be going a little bit right of the flag, seeing the ball above my feet, seeing the longer grass, grabbing the heel of the club and the wind off the right. I feel like uh, this ball needs to come out at the flag to give us a good look, because we actually have a great look here. This is our divot right here. You can see again, divot going this way. But you know what I noticed? His feet were lined up exactly where that golf ball went, okay? Feet were dead left, and then he was swinging here and the ball came out kind of dead straight, okay? So our feet alignment with our short irons. Now part of that is how he's getting into the golf ball. There's a lot of time spent looking up at the target with his body open, okay? Looking up to the target with his body open and his foot not planted in there, so everything gets in here and the whole foot line goes left. All right, without him even knowing. He's gonna need to, I, I would love to see him get more of the intermediate target and get the club face down to the intermediate target, put his feet then square to the club face and his process for getting into the golf ball to be able to make a swing is gonna go down dramatically in terms of how much process and work is being done and the simplicity that he can do it with, right? Because the whole goal out here is to make things as simple as possible. I want him over the golf ball. I want him reacting to the shot, moving on. 
Okay, place you guys can all save strokes. You're out there at 30 feet, over 20 feet for any player who's not a low single digit handicapper needs to only thing in the world that matters is your speed and trying to get it to within one club length, okay? Is that the jailbird? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> you know it. Getting you out of jail. This hole is playing 200 yards. Maybe a little under as we've got the pin up. All right, guys, so here's the 12th hole. Here's the tour green book, okay? And here's how this works. This is gonna give you a good idea. Anything green here is gonna be a relatively flat slope, okay? Gonna be places you can put pins. Anything that's a little more red is gonna be more extreme, okay? The same thing is being shown up here on these numbers. You can have pins anywhere that's probably 2.6 or below. Right, you can see here this giant slope for this tier is 12.5 degrees right there. So a ball hit up here in the middle of the slope would roll all the way back down to the hole. All right, so our pin is up here today. And that means that this green just became like this. It's only a front green. You have a little bit of a backboard. So if you were gonna air with water short, you could air slightly past the hole. It would roll up this hill and roll right back down. Looks like it came out a little bit right. And again, we got another, what, long putt. You guys can see why long putting and lag putting is an extremely vital fundamental of scoring, okay? Whenever my caddies, my players are with me, the last thing they ever hear in a long putt, every time, let's have some good speed. Because again, it's the only thing that matters. You guys aren't losing strokes by missing your read from 30 feet. You're losing strokes by long and short. So this is a little bit more, you know, we can't see exactly the line, but he's in the fringe there, and it looks like he's gonna take this ball, have to take it a little bit more in the fringe longer, because it looks like it kicks hard right. So, a situation like this, now your line and where this golf ball is leaving the fringe is very important. Um, if he reads it, and there's not as much curve, he can take a more direct route, which the speed is all, but this becomes a little bit more of a tricky putt here. He's working hard in his routine, and I'm gonna show you guys, Kevin will replay back him over the golf ball there on a putt that really is all about speed and how much time and mental energy he's taking working on his putt. I wanna turn that into much more of a reaction. I want him to be over the golf ball, and I want him to respond to being over the golf ball and hit the putt as a reaction versus a thoughtful process. There's way too much time there to have your mind wander and get consumed with other things other than what really matters, which is all speed. Hey guys, this has been awesome so far today. We're only three holes in, but I'll tell you what, there's no way I'm gonna get the type of information I've got about my player other than watching what just happened those last three holes, right? We're still even par, but there is so much room for improvement. We're gonna really allow him to free himself up and play better golf with less stress and less work. The whole goal today, I think, from what I've seen so far, is understanding the components, the scoring components of the game, the lag putting, right? Um, and then our routine is a big one for Nick, I think. I think we need to streamline that routine. I want him to get comfortable, and I want him to be confident, but I want it to happen in a third of the time and that trigger get pulled, okay? Um, We'll talk about some ways we can do that when we get going. But right now, he spends a lot of time up at the hole, which is good. You're visualizing, you're using your eyes, you're seeing things, such an important part, right? But um, we need to lay off that a little bit and get into the rhythm of, of the shot itself. Something that I think can come and play in a lot of golf courses, Kev will get behind this tee and just look at the tee markers and where they line you up. Get right behind the middle of these tees, Kev. Right. This is taking us right down to these trees and left of the cart path, right? So most every amateur that gets up here to hit this shot will set up and, and just let the tees aim them there, right? These players are gonna get out here and they're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. They're gonna know that they can't settle into the tee box, but they've gotta get a little bit more of an angle on that tee box. So that's where kind of his not intermediate target gets him a little bit, right? Is if he had an intermediate target, he'd be back here and he'd say, okay, this leaf right here, that's gonna be my intermediate target, my ball's in hand. So now I can come right here, I'm gonna put my ball right behind my leaf. And now all of a sudden I've created a straight line to where I'm hitting. And now I'm setting up to that straight line, boom. Look at where I am compared to the tee box and where we just saw his feet, right? Now it's okay, he plays a cut every time, he double crossed that one, so his feet getting left is not bad. But again, the intermediate target fixes that, and it's something you'll see in a lot of golf courses where the tee box aims you in a direction intentionally, not the place you wanna go. So the intermediate target will really, really help you guys fix 
your lines out on the course and help you get aligned more consistently every time, okay? Let's talk about where we're what I like to call out of position right now, okay? The only goal right now, despite what happened on the tee, despite anything else, is to make sure that we get ourselves back in position. Only thing that has to happen here, we need to miss this tree and finish in the short grass. Only thing. Okay, sit. And again, you know, think about it though, guys. I just said, only thing has to happen. We can't hit the tree and we gotta end up in the short grass. We got one of them. And the second one is gonna probably cost us a little bit of a shot. So again, being able to compartmentalize what has to happen and what you want to have happen. I wanna hit a low sting or 200 yards up there too. <laughs> but you know what I really like to do? Just get myself back in position to make my round more stress-free, okay? Green today, And we got out there on the golf course to follow Nick, and one of the things we saw, he was making some great putts, but he was putting a lot of stress on his game by not having good speed in his long putts, okay? So one of the things I recommend you guys doing is getting a golf ball, coming out to your local putting green, right, and hitting random putts outside 20 feet. I'm talking 20, 30, 40, you're only going to hit one at a time, and you have one goal when you're out here, is to get your speed perfect, all right? My goal is to make sure that I hit this club, this ball, to within one club length of the hole. Now think about this. If I have a standard length putter, which this is a little bit longer, but one that's 35 inches, one foot, check this out, one club length is going to be actually a six foot circle that you can hit it in. So anytime you guys have a putt outside 20 feet, if you're simply thinking about your speed, trying to get it into this six foot circle, you're gonna be saving strokes every time. Okay. So we got the 20 footer, the 30 footer, here we go. I'm not even reading it. This thing's maybe going a little left to right. Last time I hit it a little hard. All I'm trying to do is have fantastic speed on this putt and hit it solid. That should be pretty good. Awesome. Once again, guys, when you just react to it like that, when you don't overthink it and think about that line and clog your mind with things that don't matter, your line doesn't matter at 30 feet. Your speed does, okay? If we can all get in there, let's try to do one more. You get one golf ball, you go to your local golf course, and guess what? You don't leave the putting green until you hit three putts in a row to different holes that are all to a club length. Okay, I've got one in a row now. Let me see about this one. This one looks like it's going a little left to right a little more. It's a little downhill. I'm gonna hit it slightly softer. Hit it over there to the left somewhere. Didn't even read my line and now it's trickling down the hill and look, there it is again, another easy putt. I'm not putting any stress on my game, okay? And the last one here, now this one is where I feel some nerves. Oh boy, now I'm gonna go back to the first hole. I've got my longest putt across the green now. Now this thing does look like it breaks more than a foot or two. So I'm gonna hit this thing probably about two or three feet out to the right. But that's all I care about, just out there somewhere and then my mind is all back to my speed. Let's see if I can do it to get off the putting green. That thing's going hard. Lovely, I think I got my job done. Again, not even reading it, sitting there. Perfect, just barely inside that three foot mark. That's the most amount of pressure I wanna put on my game. And you know what? If I'm practicing my three and four footers, that's not gonna do anything for me, all right? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode today. If you like these tips and you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we're gonna keep getting better every time.